let me start with defining what public health is right basically when a person is not well he goes to a doctor he seeks relief from his symptoms so doctor examines him does some tests and gives some medicine that's a curative health it is a relationship between a patient and a doctor but health is much beyond that health is not just absence of disease right we should also try to prevent those diseases why should everybody come at that stage to the doctor after being sick so can we prevent something can we prevent some of those diseases that's what public health is about public health essentially is taking all those preventive measures which are aimed at ensuring the health of the people at their household so that they don't end up spending too much of time and spending too much of money on seeing a doctor and seeing a cure now government does both the central government and the state governments they do both of these activities very efficiently and very effectively we have a plethora of health organizations starting right from a primary health center in a rural area one for about uh, 25 to 30 villages are uh, covering a population of about 25 to 30000 there is a doctor sometimes there are two doctors who see the patients who come on a daily basis to them seeking any particular treatment now for every block or for every taluka we have a community health center which is much more specialized much more organized uh, services are given in admitting the patients you know primary health centers usually do not admit the people they don't admit these sick people they refer them to community health centers of course emergencies are handled at these primary health centers so we have this community health centers at taluka level where there is a physician there is a surgeon there is a gynecologist there is a pediatrician so there is a vast array of specialized clinical services which are being given at the community health centers at the district level we have a big district hospital having a bed of more than 400 to 500 where all kinds of specialists are there and uh, all kinds of services are given to the people curative services and then we have the medical college hospitals etc etc that is for the curative services but we use the same platform also to provide the public health services i was mentioning to you about the primary health centers so in these primary health centers we also have the male and female health workers we call the female health workers the auxiliary nurse midwife and we have the male multipurpose worker they are the persons who go to the field and conduct the activities at the household level at the village level aiming at prevention of these diseases that can be communicable disease or as one of my friend was mentioning it can be non communicable disease and then we have the supervisors so each of these auxiliary nurse midwife or the male health worker has a area of operation which is just about 3 to 4 villages for a population of every 3 to 4000 we have a auxiliary nurse midwife and a male health worker and their center is called as a sub center there is a small building in one of those situated in one of those 3 4 villages which function as her residence and also an office where people can come she can give some basic services basically she and he would go around house to house as often as possible mostly once in a week male workers are few in number so they go once in 15 days to every household and they conduct these number of activities so this is how the public health activities are done by the government and then we have the supervisors etc etc and then we have a facility at the district level to investigate in outbreaks of diseases disease surveillance collection of data of by special surveys all that we do so this is the difference between public health and curative health that is being done by the government of the private sector does mainly curative services there is very few input very little input being given by the private sector as far as preventive health activities are considered apart from the fact that under csr some of many of those organizations they fund some of these ngo projects some of the governmental programs also in doing this uh, especially for non communicable diseases or some communicable diseases of local importance they do pitch in but mostly it is a government which does the public health activity now how are these public health activities are run we have identified some special diseases of importance public health importance to people what diseases are there prevalent in a particular community what is the number of those cases which occur every year or every month or whatever how bad are they how many, how many deaths are caused because of those diseases are they preventable is an easy remedy available then can we apply some of the measures at the household or the village level taking these into consideration we have a number of national health programs so for each for example malaria or leprosy or tuberculosis or smallpox or whatever so for each of these diseases 
the government has a particular national health program but more importantly the vulnerable population in the community is the child and the mother 85% of the government budget is aimed at improving those services which will prevent death of the children death of the mothers health of the child and health of the mother so lot of money lot of effort lot of processes go behind that okay but by doing that we also would be helping the general health also so the in about 10 to 15% of money is spent on this different disease control programs so, so we have malaria eradication program or the leprosy eradication program or national tb control program so we have these different programs and those those programs which are aimed at improving the health of the mother and child are the reproductive and child health programs earlier we used to have the national family welfare program and then child health program etc now everything has been clubbed as reproductive and child health program a major change has taken place in the last decade or so in the government so currently we have this national health mission because we realized some time back that if we just go on doing the same things probably would not be achieving our targets so we had this million develop, millennium development goals now they are called sustainable development goals set by the united nations so we would not be in a position to achieve them so government set a time frame they came into a mission mode so we started the national rural health mission about a decade back lot of money was invested the planning commission gave us lot of money earlier the money was a major constraint for the health program staff shortages medicine shortages etc now we got the money about 10 years back the nrhm got a lot of money so with that the services were given in all the states we moved from national rural health mission by adding the concept of national urban health also so we have the overall national health mission now of which the rural health and urban health are being talked of simultaneously so for each of these programs as i told you we run the services at the village level we end up collecting a lot of data let me give let me give some different examples of that okay you were mentioning about the reliability the sharing etc etc let us come to that take a simple example as malaria problem now malaria is a major public health problem in our country we report about 2 lakh cases of uh, uh, malaria in the country about 300 to 400 people die because of malaria every year in our country but probably the numbers are much more some of the estimates have shown us that for each reported case of malaria which is recorded by the government probably there are about 15 to 20 cases of unrecorded malaria cases we admit that you know our efficiency is not that much in which we can go to every household every time and examine all those fever cases and make a diagnosis of malaria and lot of people also go to the private sector whatever data i am talking about is only data from the government sector some recently some of the surveys have shown us that people especially in the rural areas 60% of them would come to the government sector for the outpatient services and only what 40% would come for inpatient services so the remaining would obviously be seeking care from the private sector and getting the data from the private sector is not easy believe me it's very very difficult let me give a small example of h1n1 probably you must have heard of h1n1 influenza which occurred recently so we had lot of collaborative activities with the uh, private institutions in uh, bangalore earlier we used to get data from about 3 to 4 hospitals the major hospitals in the private sector in bangalore now because of our collaborative activities we could see that 80 major institutions in bangalore on a daily basis they report cases of h1n1 to us so we would know at the end of the day how many cases were there arrested okay so that is a kind of collaboration which we have established we have web based systems in which the private organizations can simply provide the data uh, to the government right so let me come back to the malaria malaria is a disease which has been targeted for elimination now by 2030 the country intends that we would see the last case of malaria and probably then there would be no indigenous transmission of malaria it's a dream i agree it may be it may be very difficult to achieve but still at least let us start moving in that direction so currently the system what we have is diagnosis of malaria by examining all those cases of fever which come to a hospital by taking a blood smear to find out whether it is malaria or not most people do not come to the hospital so we have this plethora of this male and female health workers who go house to house every week or every 15 days as i was telling you they examine that fever case they ask certain for some basic other signs and symptoms and then they take a blood smear from that case and then they are tested in the primary health center laboratory now that's a lot of data about 10 to 15% of the entire population is screened 
in a matter of an year. So if the population of, of our country is about 1.2 billion, we take about 10 to 15 percent of that as the number of fever cases which occur in a year in our community and that would be the number of blood smears taken which is a humongous figure okay now all those blood smears are examined and out of that we have about two lakh cases of malaria so we generate data regarding the number of fever cases probably which are occurring in the community it may not be an exact figure at least it will tell you the trend of the these fever cases trend of the disease and it will also guide us somebody was mentioning about how whether it is having an impact or how does it decide the policies now we would know which area is more problematic for malaria what do we need to do more in that area what health facilities we have to establish there or what insecticide we have to use for killing all those mosquitoes which transmit malaria so a health worker is given a basic format for entering the details of these fever cases he will mention just the serial numbers and the name of the person head of the household his age and gender and then since when he is having the fever and on what day the blood smear was taken and once they are examined in the laboratory in the primary health center the data of all that is again entered into a computer and then we have the details of those positive cases which we apply for uh, the planning for the next year the basic activity of the basic input that has been given to the program as a result of the national health mission is our accountability for every money every pie that we spend in the program okay so there is a major difference now as far as so far there is a thorough decentralization of the planning process whether it is malaria whether it is a national health mission or whatever any of the components now we have got a thoroughly decentralized plan that means a plan arise starts from a sub center or a primary health center the medical officer would carefully sit and he would plan for the next year we have a plan every year and then we have a perspective plan of uh, three years and then we were all overall guided by the five-year plan so we have the recently the 12th five-year plan which concluded now we will not have 13th five-year plan that's what the prime minister has decided now we won't have any 13th five-year plan he says first you talk of what you are going to do till 2020 just give me that so recently we had we started the process in which we planned for this 2020 then later we will see he said just give me what are you going to do by 2020 so each of the departments is having a plan for what we will do by 2020 so for malaria we have talked of a national strategic plan for elimination of malaria by 2020 so what we want to do by 2020 has been put into a plan now so the plan would start from a primary health center these primary health center plans would be aggregated at the district level and later these district plans would be aggregated at the state level and the state shares the plan with the center the center decides on how much money is to be given the state would come out with some figure i didn't x amount of rupees x x crores or whatever so the center depending on the kitty which would which it would get from the planning commission which would distribute among the states depending on need depending on so many factors okay so now at the beginning of the year the state is clear as to what it is supposed to do now regarding malaria what would be my activity so many blood smears i'm going to collect what is the number of cases which i expect okay so what facilities i should set up so we have the money and we have the activities so we match these two so in that year plan what we the yearly plan what we make so we have very clear line items for those activities the money which is allotted to that and what are the indicators which will measure the physical performance under, the, under those indicators so now everything, everything has become much organized now probably we were not that organized earlier so though we were doing the activities but now it is being done one of my friend was mentioning how do you measure the impact or whatever okay so apart from the the data of the this blood smear collection taking the example of a malaria program like how many cases of malaria we have this year how many we had last year which are the problematic areas we also conduct special surveys and a sampling so my friend of my other of my friend was talking about sampling so we have this large quality assurance sampling in which at the decentralized level for every taluka or at least for every district we would conduct a survey once a year or twice a year sometimes more also as to find out what really are the number of fever cases and how the different activities are performed at it so we do have that sample study apart from that we are also guided by independent surveys probably you have heard about the national family health survey nfhs it's called nfhs if you just google it you will get all kind of data now that's an open data okay anybody can access that nfhs okay so every four to five years the government identifies many organizations 
independent organizations who can carry out this activity. It funds them and those activities, independent of the government setup, independent of the health department, they again do a sample survey. Of course, you cannot cover all the households in India. So they would do a sample survey to give us what is the current rates or current prevalence or current incidence of diseases, what are the health habits of the people, how much money they are spending, where are they accessing the facilities and what more can be done. It will give you what percentage of people are anemic, what percentage of people are going to the private sector, what are the out-of-pocket expenses, so it measures everything. So this NFHS becomes a major source of data for us to guide the program. Apart from our own data, we do validate by NFHS. Apart from that, each of these states would conduct their own DHS, it is called District Health Service. Okay? So District Health Surveys are conducted by these different states. Apart from that, as an inbuilt component of these programs, we do have surveys planned within. For example, let me give an example. Recently we conduct this, probably you must have heard of the measles rubella vaccination campaign. Did you hear about that? Your sisters or brothers would have gone for that. We covered children below the age group of 15 with that. Okay, So each of those children were given a single shot of measles and rubella vaccine. So we make a plan and then we give the services. We went to all the schools, private or government schools. We covered all the children. Karnataka, I am telling you, we are extremely proud to tell that we achieved 98.5% coverage. Unheard of in public health, okay? We were struggling with 60 or 70. The NFHS recently in talked of some 60 to 70% actual coverage of fully, the, the actual coverage under the vaccination program with all the governmental efforts. Still probably we are not reaching not more than 60 to 70% of children who are fully immunized because we have a plethora of different vaccines. Okay, so a child to call it as a fully immunized would have, would, should have received all these vaccinations in time, etc. It used to be 60 70. Now, Karnataka showed us that it is quite, it's, it's, it, we can do much better than that. So we achieved, we did about 98.5%. Now, to validate that, we undertake surveys. So, from our office itself, we did survey in Bagalkot districts where we could see 93% actual coverage. Reported coverage from Bagalkot district was about 96 or 97. So we could show that in our sample survey, the coverage was not less than 92%, probably a bit more than that. So we do have inbuilt components under these programs to measure what exactly is the level of coverage. So then the NRHM also ensures that much of this data is available to the people. I would just like to show you the screenshots of some of our programs where the data is made available to the public. The major change what NHM brought into the program was a web-based information system. Earlier, we used to struggle with our paper-based programs in which primary health centers would send paper reports to the district level and from to the state level and to the center. So we made a web-based program where at every primary health center, we have a computer with internet facility. So we have developed this health management information system where on a weekly basis or monthly basis or even more frequently or a person based also. So we enter the data after providing the services. We give the services and all the data is now entered into that. Okay. So that means each primary health center has been, has been given a login and a password and then they enter this data. So immediately we are able to uh, analyze at the district level or at the state level or at the country level as to what exactly is going on. Okay? I was telling you about the pop vulnerable population, the mother and the children. So today the whole, the entire, the main concept of NRHM is the mother and child tracking system. Every child and every woman who becomes pregnant is tracked right up to her delivery uh, till the child at least becomes five years of age group. Each child is tracked as to what services are to be given to that child or the mother, the frequency of that, okay, and then how do you follow it up. Now, we have this mobile everywhere, everywhere, every, every child, every person in the village also has a mobile phone now. So, we have linked it to the mobile, okay. So, we collect the data from the mother or the child regarding her address and then uh, the phone number, etc. Now, the system is built in such a way that a SMS message would go to that mother as to what services are due what services are due to the child. The child has to receive three doses of pentavalent vaccine in third, fourth and fifth month, a measles at ninth month, a booster at 18 months and at four years, etc, etc. Now, SMS would go to that family that next week your vaccination is due. 
An SMS had also would go to the pregnant woman that your next visit to the primary health center is due in a week. You are supposed to have your hemoglobin test done or whatever. So we have these text messages. So most of our AMs they are text savvy now. So we have given this free SIM cards to this uh, AM. They would have their own mobile phone. So we were, we have given a CUG SIM to all these auxiliary nurse midwives with a very simple uh, text based reporting system. They just send an SMS to the number, predetermined number which is there in that mobile. So the data would get aggregated at the, at the district level. So we have this mother and child tracking system which is one of the major developments hailed all over the world as one of the most successful uh, programs. Okay, So we are able to reach a large number of people very effectively. Not only for NRHM, not only for reproductive and child health. I was mentioning about many different communicable diseases. The tuberculosis is a major public health problem much more probably much more important than malaria or any other disease simply because people are reporting with tuberculosis which is not responding to the commonly available drugs so we have the drug resistant forms of tuberculosis why do you think that the united states of america is pumping a lot of money to india for strengthening some of our health programs we receive a lot of money from world bank and who are the main donors to this world bank it is again america europe and these countries america is very much cared about a drug resistant form of tuberculosis case coming to America as a software engineer or whatever, as a worker or whatever. Okay? Because a person with drug resistant tuberculosis, apart from an occasional cough, he looks just normal. He is a bit lean, that's all. He is a bit anemic, that's all. But he is just, he's just as <laughs> efficient worker as anybody. So they invest a lot of money in identifying this. So we have this national revised national tuberculosis control program where again as i told you we go house to house and from our primary health centers we collect data regarding the chest symptomatics who are the persons who are having symptoms suggestive of tuberculosis we bring them to the primary the community health centers where the sputum is collected from them and sputum is examined to find out whether it is tuberculosis or not the most important point in tuberculosis is the compliance treatment compliance Traditionally, if you see over the decades, the treatment for tuberculosis lasts up to one to two years. Okay, it's a very long-standing treatment, and every day the tablets are to be taken for about one to two years. People would get fed up after a week or so. He would feel slightly better after a month. He would immediately stop the tablets, and that would result in the tuberculosis bacteria in his body remaining in the body, which probably has developed resistance to these drugs because of improper dosage that used to be major program so we have got what is called as an ikshai it's a branded uh, uh, software program which has been developed which is new which tracks every case of tuberculosis okay so from the time he has developed the symptoms all his details are recorded on what day he came to the primary health center when the treatment was started and then he would get reminder on his mobile phone and there is also a person who goes and does it now uh, to, to strengthen all the mechanisms of this health department, we have a volunteer at the village called as ASHA accredited, accredited uh, social health activist, ASHA. She is a volunteer. She is a lady of about uh, 25 to 45 years, resident of that village, married or whatever. Some, some of them, they belong to the reserve category so that they, at the village level, they perform as a link between the health department and the people. Okay? They stay at the village and they see that the services are given. They undergo an elaborate training program. They undergo periodic capacity development uh, activities are done for those people. Okay? Now, they would know what is this case of tuberculosis in that village. And in a very, uh, what is a confidential, because tuberculosis people would not like to be labeled as tuberculosis people. Just like for HIV or AIDS people, they would not be labeled as, they would not like to be labeled as suffering from the disease. In a, in a very uh, conservative way, in a very confidential way, she goes to that household, sees that he is taking the tablet. Each of them is given a dabba. Earlier the tablets used to be dispensed on a periodic basis. Now we have a box. Each patient has a box of these medicines. For the next six months, the tablets are made available to him. And so the Asha would go to that household, count the actual number of tablets, to find out whether the SE has actually swallowed, are there any adverse effect of the drug, or are the symptoms persisting, so etc. Our site ensures that the NHM or whatever, that accessibility, accessibility to people, accessibility to everybody, anybody can access our data, provided he shows that his intentions are positive, 
and then he can ask for any particular report from that. So we have got this accessibility statement which is there in all of our websites. So we have made a commitment to the people that the data what we have, the data what we collect is for you, it is for people. Okay, so you can access any data and we've got different mechanisms to ensure that. All our websites, all the software programs, etc. has a citizen charter. What is expected of us? What exactly are we doing? What are our activities? How much budget is going to each of these programs? Are there any problems with that? Have you noticed something amiss? Do you want to report something? You can. You send us a report. We also assure that we take the action. So in the citizen charter, we have mentioned that those your observations or those of your allegations or whatever would be inquired into and an answer would be given in a particular time period. So we have got in so many working days, we will get back to you with a positive report. Okay. And believe me, it's working very well. Okay. Some people may have some complaints, whatever, but all these complaints are legitimately inquired into and we get back to that person. We have, we have given the contact numbers to the persons. Either an email can be sent or a phone message can be given, SMS message can be given or a letter can be sent or whatever. So we have given the details of the person to be contacted. Now each of those websites, this applies to state governments also. Each state government has a sub uh, NHM software which mentions a person who can be contacted for anything to know about, to know more about any of those activities. So the, the email address and the websites the phone numbers, etc., are recorded everywhere. More than anything, we have this Right to Information Act. A very powerful tool for anybody to find out what exactly is happening in the government sector. Actually, a revolution has taken place in the last few years regarding this Right to Information Act. Okay? So, anybody can simply write a letter to an officer whose details are given in the website of every known health, every known department, not only health, it applies to all the departments. So his email address and his addresses and phone numbers are given. You simply have to write a letter asking for what information you want. Unless for some defense matters and unless for extremely important matters, all the information is developed. We don't have any secrets in the health department. Okay? They simply can ask for any information. What is the staff? What is the salary? What exactly are they doing? How effective are they? What is, the, what is the number of these diseases, how many people have availed of that, all the details can be made available to anybody. Okay? Lot of data is kept in an open accessible way in all these websites, but apart from that you can access any of the data. A Lot of data is available as outputs of those reports. So we know exactly, I was talking about the plan, I was talking about the yearly plan, perspective plan. Now a plan of every state is put on the website. So you would know today just by accessing our website how much Karnataka government is investing for health, how much assistance it is taking, seeking from the center, what external assistance is it getting, how that money is, be, is to be used, what are those activities and what are those indicators, everything is kept in the open. Okay? So the NRHM ensures that all these state plans are available to everybody so you can question, question your own government. Okay? You can ask a question to the government, last year you did that, you used so much of money, what have you achieved? Those questions can be asked, definitely. Apart from that, we also publish the annual reports. Uh, these are our program performance uh, reports done on a periodical basis. Every year, the Ministry of Health and Family for Government of India and all the state governments would prepare a very detailed annual report of all the national programs, about the complete demographics and all this disease data all the program performance data comes out with, with a, in a soft copy which is made available on our website. All these annual reports can be accessed. For any of these disease control programs, we have this PDF uh, documents which are available giving all the details of the surveillance activities, etc. How many outbreaks are there, how many people have died, or all those vaccination details, everything is kept in that annual report. We also have a report to the people on health. So we, to a common man, what is the intention of the government? So, on a periodical basis, on an annual basis, we have this report to the report to the people. What is my plan? What do I want to do? What are my objectives? Okay? And how I will spend the money? So that is given in the form of report to people. And a very interesting document. Some of this you should specially access. Especially this report I want you to access from our website and then see what the government int intends to do. Uh, how, how honest are they? How frank are they about this? Probably you should read it. It's a very interesting uh, uh, document.
Coming back to malaria, so our website would talk of state-wise the number of cases of malaria which have occurred, number of people who have died. This is updated almost on a weekly or at least on a monthly basis depending on the data which we garner from the state. This is done at the country level. Now each state also would, so would do similar. So for all, this is the data for dengue. So just like malaria, for all the other diseases which are spread by mosquitoes, we have got a major program. Dengue is a very serious problem now. So dengue incidence is being monitored daily. So we would, at the Karnataka we have got how many cases yesterday we had of dengue, did anybody die, where did they take the treatment, all those, what, or what preventive measures have been taken, etc. All that are recorded. These are all available to the public on a, a daily uh, basis. Apart from that, uh, we come out with some special programs. The, our Honorable Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, one of his major initiative was how do we involve the private sector as a partner in the program? Somebody was mentioning about partnership. So he started this Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matrutva Yojana. On 9th of every month, apart from every government hospital, he has requested all the private doctors, private hospitals on that day to give free service to the pregnant women. So on 9th of that month, a, a, a pregnant woman can approach any of the hospitals. Most of them are enrolled. People were also very happy. So most hospitals in the private sector also, they agreed. And on a particular day, the services are given free to everybody. Free, it's, it's free every day for the, in the government sector. But all the private hospitals, they have agreed that on that day, we would do that. So a very ambitious program, very well run uh, program. So uh, very good services are being given to the pregnant woman. Probably, maybe it will come for many other things also. Uh, in the future. Talking of a disease like cancer, which is a very serious disease, how do we collect the data? We have a very ambitious cancer registry program. Okay, Each case of cancer, whether it is mostly in the, in the government sector is being done, many private are also partner now. Now all cases of cancer are registered now because cancer is a very long duration disease. I mean you don't get cured or but in a very short while, many people die. In fact, most people die, but at least we have ensured that people live for a longer time. It's a very chronic uh, disease. So we have these cancer registries. So take the example of Kidwai Memorial Institute of Oncology in Bangalore. Lot of people approach that. Uh, it's a very busy hospital. Lot of poor people come to that hospital. Each case of cancer is registered. So his name and all his details and symptoms, uh, treatment given, the any adverse effects of drugs, longevity, other issues, all that are done. So that cancer registry at a point of time which talk of how many different types of cancers are there etc. That would pay way for particular programs. So we are moving away from communicable disease to non-communicable disease because you know probably that lifestyle diseases or the non-communicable diseases are becoming more of a priority. We have conquered many of these communicable diseases. We have eradicated smallpox, we have eradicated polio. We are on the probably way to eradication of many other communicable diseases. So apart from this cancer registry, we also have stroke registry, strokes, you know, the paralysis. So we have got stroke registry, we have got injury registry. So along this national highways, with this trauma care, these hospitals, they record all cases of injuries which come to hospital. So registries are there which record these cases for different other.